On Sunday, February the 26th, I traveled to Port-au-Prince for the branch visit and was warmly welcomed by many of the Bethel family of 54 members. The branch office supervises the preaching work for more than 20,000 publishers. Although Haiti has faced economic challenges and suffered recent natural disasters, our brothers are positive and focus their attention on helping others to identify our scriptural hope. The Haitian people show a keen interest in the Word of God. Our brothers average more than 42,000 Bible studies each month, and Haiti enjoyed a memorial attendance of more than 86,000 in 2016. This is four times more than the number of publishers in the branch territory. The brothers love to use the videos in the ministry. This is made possible by the Haiti audio video teams translating the videos into their native language. While many in Haiti speak French, the common language of the people in general is Haitian Creole. Creole is said to be an expressive language that combines French words with the grammar of West African languages. The number of publishers in Haiti has quadrupled since the start of Creole translation back in 1987. The complete New World Translation Bible was released in Creole in 2015. We met with the translation team to commend them for the good work they do. We reminded them of the many positive results in the field ministry that have taken place since translating the Bible and our literature in Creole. As an example, Merlene is a vendor of fruits and vegetables who was asked if she would supply some of her produce to Bethel. Although she was very impressed the first time she arrived at the Bethel property, she said she found the large steel gate to be intimidating. So she prayed to God to protect her while in the yard at Bethel. The brothers dealt kindly with her when she made her deliveries on Monday each week. One of the brothers from the kitchen told her that maybe someday she too would become one of Jehovah's Witnesses. She accepted an invitation to the memorial. And despite some personal challenges, such as not being able to read well, she began to attend some congregation meetings. Merlene could see the difference between Jehovah's loving people and those in her church. A study was started with her, and she progressed to the point of baptism in 2009. Since then, she has worked diligently to teach the truth to her children with good results. Her oldest son graduated from the School for Kingdom Evangelizers and serves as an elder and temporary special pioneer. Recently, another of her sons was appointed a ministerial servant, and the four other children are unbaptized publishers. Having our literature in Creole and with the help of her children, she has improved her reading. She now benefits from reading the Bible in Creole, the language of her heart. Good results are beginning to be seen in the field of American Sign Language, which is now used in Haiti. There are now 87 deaf publishers in four ASL congregations and eight groups. The congregation here is singing praises to Jehovah. Even our little sister is learning to do this. This brother showed us the effort he puts forth to prepare for a Bible reading. A special program for Haiti was held on Saturday morning at the Open Air Assembly Hall on the branch property. A total of 1,405 were in attendance. We were very encouraged to see the group of our brothers who benefited from the program in American Sign Language. The program was recorded and presented at Kingdom Halls throughout the country later that same day and also on Sunday to a combined audience of 34,812. We felt a little sad to leave the brothers on Sunday morning for a drive of about six hours or so to the Dominican Republic for the second branch visit. En route, we traveled through some semi-arid areas to the border between the two countries. The terrain varied greatly as we drove through small mountains, rich agricultural regions, and along the Caribbean Sea. We took the opportunity to witness to some individuals at the border and at various checkpoints leaving literature along the way. Upon entering the city of Santo Domingo, we quickly identified the large JW.org sign at the branch office. We were enthusiastically greeted by many of the 73 Bethel family members. 
Although the preaching work is done primarily in Spanish, our brothers are expanding their ministry to reach the language of the hearts of many peoples and cultures. There are now five Haitian Creole circuits in the Branch Territory, 26 American Sign Language congregations, and other congregations or groups in Russian, Chinese, Italian, and French. We joined a group of brothers and sisters in the field ministry in the Chinatown district of Santo Domingo. Our group gave a witness to both Spanish and Chinese-speaking people on the streets, most of whom respectfully listened to our message. A Bethel brother, Evan, told us of the challenge he faced when learning the truth. I was finishing medical school while serving in the Dominican Army. By then, I had been serving for six years. At my aunt's home, I found the Revelation book. It made such an impact on me that I stole it and read it all on my own. There's a vision in chapter 6 of Revelation where the sixth seals open and the skies darken and the army commanders hide in caves. That vision impressed me so much that I decided to serve Jehovah. That meant that I would have to leave the army because witnesses are neutral. I quickly decided to talk to my immediate commander to ask him to please discharge me from the army. However, he rejected my request and said, no, you have served in the army for six years. You have to stay in the army. I was not concerned because I could still appeal to the colonel in charge of personnel. However, my request for resignation was rejected again. I left and went to the hallway. I prayed to Jehovah. I want to serve you. What should I do? Help me find a way out of this. When I opened my eyes, another army officer approached and greeted me using my name. I still don't know who he is. He asked me, what do you need? I explained that I wanted to resign in order to become a Jehovah's Witness. He said, don't worry, give me your papers. I'm the Colonel's assistant. Within 20 minutes, my discharge papers were ready and approved. In a short period of time, I became a publisher and I got baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. At this time, I've been serving happily in Bethel for over 11 years with my wife, Hael. Without a doubt, Jehovah helps those who put their complete trust in Him. The branch is blessed to have as part of their Bethel family some who had been longtime missionaries. I enjoyed a very pleasant visit with five of the senior members of this group, three of whom are 98 years of age. Brother William Dingman is of the first class of Gilead. His wife Estelle attended the 12th class. Thelma Kreitz is also of the 12th class. Barbara Parker is of the 42nd class. And Helen Ferrari attended the second class of Gilead. To illustrate the length of their full-time service is the fact that Sister Ferrari is among those who stood up to identify themselves as part of the great multitude at the 1935 convention in Washington, D.C. The average age of this group is 94. Even more impressive is that their average years of full-time service is 73. These faithful ones set a fine example continuing to be active in the ministry, taking into account their ages and health limitations. Such loyal servants of Jehovah are considered spiritual treasures wherever they may serve. I still have one study so far, although my sight doesn't allow me to do too much, but I try. I, my legs aren't so good for walking, so I, they wheel me around. <laughs> In all of my life, I would consider the life that I have spent as, as a missionary, and here in Dominican Republic as well, it's the, a wonderful life. I couldn't have chosen a better companion <laughs> and also a better life than to be preaching the message of the good news of the kingdom. The Dominican Republic Bethel family considers it a privilege to have a share in providing care for such faithful ones. On Sunday, March the 12th, a special program was held at the Open Air Assembly Hall adjacent to the branch office. A total of 3,050 benefited from the spiritual program and Christian Association. The visits to the Dominican Republic and Haiti branches 
proved to be an encouragement and a spiritual blessing to all who participated in them.